let's move on with that one i'm going to talk about quickly with this concerning some of the comments from some of the joe rogan uh supporters out there who have now visit who have now decided i guess to ban around and you know stand up for him and back him up by posting pictures of themselves with him like he's, so they're acting as if he died i mean like he died in some horrible car, car crash you know which didn't happen touch wood the guy's alive he just dropped too many m-bombs and compared black people to apes when you go into watch planet yips in a fairly densely black populated area somewhere do you know what i mean it was just like oh mate that that story about him watching planet yips was actually worse than the actual n-word bomb I swear on my life it was. Like, that was actually much worse. I really, really do think it was. But maybe people will kind of disagree. But anyway, regardless, um, let me get off of the screen. I got it ready. So, everyone's banding around. Everyone's basically trying to, um, you know, uh, pay tribute in their some in their what in one way or the other by basically letting it be known that they're gonna stand up for their friend in a way to kind of push back against cancel culture and whatnot and censorship. Blah 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 blah. But on paper, when you actually look at it, it does actually look quite ridiculous, right? There are these comics that are kind of banding around trying to protect somebody or stand up for someone that essentially used a word that they should not use in any circumstance and used it in a very derogatory way or used you know connotations describing black people as monkeys in a very just described in, in a very derogatory way in one instance right i can't even speak too well at the moment too much green juice but you get what i mean you get what i mean i thought all the support was you know fairly innocent and kind of made some sense in terms of people just wanting to be there for him because they felt like maybe he was there for them during their kind of darkest, deepest moments. But one that kind of stuck out to me that I thought was a little bit cringe was Whitney Cummings. And the reason why I say Whitney Cummings was cringe because as most of you would know, she was somebody who I felt like handled the Chris Delia and Brian Callen cancellations very poorly, even though they had nothing to do with her. She was not, she was no, she, she wasn't there flipping she's laying maxwell she wasn't rounding up these young girls allegedly to be you know whatever you know uh, for these supposed comics or whoever i'm talking about she wasn't doing that clearly but she also was one of both of their friends right she knew both of them really well especially in crystal lee in terms of professional relationship or professional relationship that they had working together on that show whitney and other things they'd done before in the past um so you would have thought it would have been a good opportunity for maybe to her to talk about i don't know how difficult it is to be a woman in entertainment industry to navigate that scene um you know how she's basically had to kind of come to some sort of realization of maybe the place the part that she has maybe inadvertently played by enabling or standing next to somebody that she maybe never spoke up about before because they were friends i don't know there's a way that you could spin it where you don't need to look like you're burying your friend or throwing him under the bus too obviously you are essentially you basically are throwing them under the bus but you can do it in a way that seems tactful because clearly she's got her own career to protect and no one's saying she just bury her own career for the sake of some random dude no but also it's not a random dude is it it's somebody that you would kind of deem to be a friend somebody who they kind of had really interesting introspective conversations on their podcast clearly somebody she had a lot of respect for or admiration for in terms of his comedy and it's suddenly out of the blue he gets one accusation which i don't think was a shock to a lot of people in that scene because you know i don't think you can hang out with somebody at night doing comedy and not see the things that they are into whether it's dark stuff or normal stuff you just you know you may be not gonna not gonna say anything because it's not your business but to suggest that it just is all of a shock and they never knew anything i really don't believe it but again this is just me talking on my ass i've got no information about that sort of stuff i don't know what's going on there i live in england i don't want any smoke leave me alone but this is kind of a series of tweets that Whitney Cummings put up regarding some of her defense when it comes to Rogan. And in all of these defenses, I think with the exception of maybe one, I don't think she even mentions his name, which again goes to show the lack of kind of spine that people are just having it. So you're trying to defend somebody publicly for something I don't think you should be defending someone for anyway. You know, okay, okay, here's one. There's one of them. But again, it's not really a defense. It's more so just speaking kind of vaguely open-ended about the situation. So... It's not even like she's coming out and actually saying it with her chest. She's just kind of meekly kind of declaring some sort of allegiance to not look like um, she's not speaking up, you know, in the midst of her comedic peers. But one tweet reads as follows. If you wanted real change, you'd be focused on elections, not taking place on Tuesday instead of a comedian who wears spacesuits on, on, uh, on some of his episodes jokes. So clearly, again, um, <laughs> minimizing something a lot of people feel really... Uh, 
to take me seriously. I guess I've kind of made my position clear in terms of what I feel about the whole situation. I don't necessarily care about it too much. Um, I was aware of the clips beforehand um, when I first started listening to Rogan. I was also kind of aware of how edgy and sort of out there some of the early podcasts were. I took them into my strides, the one that I didn't like, I just skipped. I didn't really have that much of an issue with it. And again, I don't really think those comments are reflective of him as a character. I don't think they kind of are in, uh, an inkling or a window into his psyche that he might be a secret racist. I don't think that's the case at all. Um, it might be an oath. He might be a bit of a dimwit. Um, again, that Plan the story was flipping crazy, but I don't think it's that deep personally. But again, in the States, that sort of stuff doesn't run the same. Um, they're a lot more sensitive to those kind of words. Um, maybe Joe Rogan's got a different sort of appeal to people out there. Maybe they associate more with people that are, you would say, are what, right wing or people that may be white nationalists. So maybe it kind of conjures up some different sort of emotions. So to hear somebody or to see somebody like Whitney Cummings, white as snow, pale as snow, right? White as fuck, basically telling you that you shouldn't be taking what he says seriously, even though it's definitely serious for you. That's a little bit demeaning, right? <laughs> that's a little bit demeaning, a little bit dismissive. And clearly some black woman here in the comments called um, Francesca Ramsey, and no idea who she is. I'm pretty sure she probably does something in the entertainment industry, decided to give a bit of a read instead of following. People are multifaceted they can care about multiple things at once the same way your tweet doesn't mean you don't care about a bunch of other things that said as a white woman it's fucked up to chime in on how black folks should feel about the n-word regardless of if they called jokes or nah maybe sit this one out and then of course that tweet got deleted which is why i took the screenshots because i knew you know someone like this doesn't really have a spine or anything so she's definitely going to go through and delete stuff another one she posted comedians don't need to sign up to be your hero it's your job to be irreverent dangerous to question authority and take you through a spooky mental haunted house so you can arrive at your own conclusion stay focused on the people we pay taxes to be moral leaders this woman's on the trip you would imagine this is coming from some sort of i don't know intellectual or something but no she's just meant to be a stand-up comedian so you would imagine maybe i don't know make a joke out of it you know tease people i don't know poke fun at it nah let's just let's just speak about ourselves as what dangerous irreverent you know thought thinkers and stuff like thought leaders like no you're not and clearly uh, mark Marin echoed those thoughts with his reply at the bottom said maybe add to be funny to the list which is a nice little burn there he's always had a bit of a, a weird relationship with rogan it feels like i don't know if it's love hate or hate love but you know they always have a bit of a tumultuous relationship and he's also somebody that doesn't really adhere to the whole cancel culture they're trying to suppress our views and censorship thing because he feels like i think you mentioned in a show once that basically everyone has been censored has gone on to make millions and millions of dollars so it's not as if censorship isn't good for business it's actually the best sort of marketing tool actually going out and saying something crazy in the hope that it can get you cancelled quote unquote so that you could use that to leverage yourself into other deals and other streams of revenue or whatnot or bigger gigs or bigger fees or whatnot or whatever it may be i just thought that was a good little burn and then the other one was don't look to why so many people trust rogan look to why so few people trust the mainstream media again in middle of the road vague open-ended comments of support not really saying anything trying to say something again loads of words without saying anything in the hope that she doesn't basically come out of it looking too bad again mostly protecting herself in this regard which again you know we shouldn't be too surprised considering how um limp-wristed that she was when it came to standing up or defending uh chris lee and uh brian callan who i'd imagine are probably smiling and chuckling at themselves in bed now at the moment considering what rogan's having to go through in it that they had to basically stomach the entire to you know, this situation on their own without having any real um help or support from anybody really for the most part apart from Shaw, who you know imagine that being your support system not the best in the world i'd 